Hey guys, today we're gonna try to demystify the endlessly complex world of coffee, something I know very little about, but something Erica Voni, director of coffee at Trade Coffee, knows a lot about. Coffee, Erica? Yeah, let's get down to basics. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what is Trade Coffee? Yeah, so Trade is an online marketplace that represents 52 roasters. We've got over 400 coffees and we have a personalized matching quiz that helps narrow that entire selection down. Mm -hmm. We have a whole smattering of different coffees here. I'm wondering if, um, if you were to ask me a few pointed questions, if you could then select which one of these might be best for me. Yeah, we can take the let's, quiz let's in do real a, life. A live and, quiz. Yeah, yeah, live yeah, quiz yeah. using my brain, all right. How do you make your coffee in the morning? I use a French press, sometimes a Chemex. Uh, do you like your coffee to taste classic and traditional, or do you want something that's a little bit more adventurous? I like uh, I like a little adventure, especially okay. in the morning. Okay, yeah. a little adventure in the morning. Uh, do you take it black? Yes. Okay. Preference for like fruity notes or more like chocolatey caramel kind of sweet notes? In the morning, I'm going fruit. Going and fruit? In the evening, I'm going chocolatey caramel. I think your best bet is actually going to be this Verve street level. All right. Yeah, it's roasted a little bit darker, stone fruit, marmalade, and maple syrup. That sounds like a fabulous combination. Coffee is something that people need to get through the day. Oh, yeah. But if you're trying to enjoy your coffee more, if you're trying to really understand it and, and, and discover new levels to it, what do you recommend? equipment wise. You can definitely stick with your coffee maker. I think drip coffee makers are a great way, especially if that's what you're used to for strength, but using filtered water is like a huge game changer. First things first, gotta grind some beans, right? Correct. So I don't have a fancy conical burr grinder. I mean, I do back in there, but we, mm -hmm. let's pretend that I don't have that. <laughs> Listen, man, you know, still breaking up the beans enough to pour hot water on them coffee's gonna come out. And yeah. now here's something I've always been bad at, is measuring the amount of coffee that I need. How many cups are we making? How many, how much coffee do we need to make those cups? So I usually focus on grams. So for a French press, I use a one to four ratio. One, okay. One gotcha. to four, and then you can also remember that it takes about four minutes to brew a French press. So mm -hmm. if you ever get lost, just remember the number four and you'll be good to go. Let's do it. Yeah, what sort of texture are we going for here? We're going for uh, like kosher salt, like really coarse. People know how I feel about kosher salt. This is also good for cold brew as well. Anything with an immersion brew method where the coffee just sits in contact with water. You stay pretty coarse. Yeah. I've got this gooseneck kettle and mm -hmm. I know that it's the best the option best. for coffee making, I, I think. It gives you a lot of control. Yeah. That's like the whole thing. So when you're like, getting really experimental with your pour pattern. When I do pour overs, I do the satanic star. Nice. Yeah, typically. Listen, conjuring with coffee is kind of like a low key hobby of mine. Uh, temperature. Oh, temperature of the water. Yeah where, yeah, where should we be? I say that 200 degrees Fahrenheit is the sweet spot. For people who don't want to sit here and take their coffee's temperature like a psycho, like I'm doing, you just don't let the water quite boil. Just bring it right to the edge. Bring it right to the edge, or if it does boil, uh, pull it off and just start swirling it so it releases a little bit of that heat. I should be letting you do this. No, I'm learning from the master here. How often do you get to do that? I like wiggling this because it helps get all the grind saturated. Like mixes it up essentially. Well, yeah. yeah. In, in coffee in brewing, we call that agitation, mm -hmm. which is fun. You can make a lot of really bad dad jokes about that. Like what? Nothing's coming. So your coffee's wet. It's brewing. We didn't set a timer. Oh, all right, well, close enough. Close Who enough. Who in the hell? I like making sure that the top part of the plunger we just, okay. It's just pushing it under. Gotcha. This helps retain heat even better mm -hmm. and make sure that all your grounds are, sa are saturated. Bing! Oh, that looks like a nice, Nice over each cup. Mm. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Mm. So it's a little acidic. Is that what I'm That's detecting? That's definitely that marmalade. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. Next time we make a French press, if we go even finer, we can pull out a little bit more of that sweetness. Interesting. So it's not necessarily that we did something wrong. It's <laughs> more that we can bring out different characteristics from the coffee by treating it differently. Yes. You were singing the praises of the Chemex before as the sort of next step when you want to really up your coffee game. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at here? 
We are looking at a glass brewer. The mm -hmm. glass gets really hot, so yes. that's the reason for the collar. It also makes it super annoying to clean, which is great. Yes. Also, it necessitates a little bit of a little love to get it to exactly where you want it to be. So you want to make sure that you got one, one side that's only one and then the other side with three. So you just open and do a little cone shape. And then you put the side with the three along the spout. I'm just preheating the Chemex, and then I'm also wetting the filter. Uh, 37 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water. Wow. So we want this one to be more fine. Okay. I like the noises that it makes. Yeah. So for the Chemex, we're going for a much finer texture for a finer textured coffee. 37 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water. Okay. And it's two 250 gram pours. I like to pour directly into the center because the lowest part of all the grounds are right at the bottom of that cone. And then once the water starts coming up a little bit, I start going in circles. To mix up the grounds yep. or? Okay. And I add an ellipsis movement like this. Oh, so you're going up and down and going up and around. down and around. Wow. You extract a lot of the really good stuff in the first pour. And then when you go in for the second round, that's pretty much to even it all out. Mm. If we just drank this right now, it'd be very tight. Sure. All the flavors would be super compacted. So I like to knock all the stuff down off the sides. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a very vigorous uh, brewing action that you have there. Mm -hmm. 500 on the nose. Oh, done this. Jeez. Done it before. When it drains all the way though, you want to make sure that it's a nice, even bed on the bottom. Uh, you want to get in there and sniff and see if it smells like dinner coffee? <laughs> yeah, it smells good. Ah, <laughs> so. oh, God, that's a good cup of coffee. That's really good. That's really good. That is like the best parts of diner coffee without any added like bitterness or chewiness. And it has dimension to it. It's not as simple as diner coffee. Diner mm -hmm. coffee tastes like coffee. Whew, that is good. Are That's you, good living. I like that you're still surprised by how good coffee can be. Yeah. Are you are you still do you still is it still magic for you? Oh yeah. You can never become a full master at coffee. Even though I won a competition that I got coffee master as like a title from, I'm not. Like you can never just master all of it. According to Robin Sam from Denver, Colorado, is the best coffee maker he's ever owned. Wow. He or she, it. sorry. So no, this is the official unboxing. The official unboxing of the- Unboxing, uh, of unboxing the, with Babish. We're gonna do an inverted because it looks cooler. Okay. Yeah, you put the filter in this little thing that holds on and then it screws in like that. Okay. But just like with every paper filter, you wanna wet it first. Oh, okay. Do it this way. And you add the um, coffee to the bottom it will still kind of drip out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So people will make the coffee inverted so that way they don't lose any and they put it on and they can also then pretend that they're bartenders and do like a little flare thing. It kind of smells like, like jam mm. toast. We're being badasses by following the instructions, <laughs> like in the Lego movie. So it's at the temperature. All right. And so we're pouring to the second number. And start. It seems like not much liquid. Is that going to be a full cup this, of coffee? This is going to be really intense. Uh, so it's at 20 to 40 seconds, which means that we're coming up on 20 right now. Okay. So I'm putting this what on top? I think this is a safety first lesson. Yeah. There we go. Press. Cool. And That's so cool. There's a big gap and, and you're pushing it down. It's science. Look it up. Okay, that sound that means that you push all the air out. And we're done. And then we're done. I think they know what they're talking about. That is pretty good. Oh, that's great. That's really fruity, but without the acid. It's really intense, but it's not jarring. Yeah. It's still super duper sweet. I would put that right head to head with the Chemex. Like, that's such a clean cup of coffee. Hooray! <laughs> if you could do that every time we brew a cup of coffee, that'd be great. It's okay. gonna make me, it's gonna feel a lot more celebratory. I think the caffeine's like kicking in now. <laughs> People love iced coffee. They do. The end. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for coming through and teaching me so much about coffee. Two of the biggest things that I learned are that number one, there's always more to learn. Oh, I yeah. saw you learn some things today and you are a decorated coffee master. You said it, not me. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> but it's your actual like, title. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's verifiable, look it up. Yeah. And, um, 
Also that there is no wrong way to enjoy coffee. That's so true. Don't let anybody tell you that the coffee that you like is wrong because you are the expert of your own flavor dictionary, so you might as well own it. But don't be afraid to explore. Definitely don't. There's so much good coffee out there that's outside of what you're used to that like, sure, you might get let down because your preference isn't met in certain ways, but the amount of stuff that you'll explore or introduce yourself to is totally worth it. Awesome. Well, guys, go check out drinktrade.com for the sponsor of today's episode and the source for all this wonderful information. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming, Erica, and we'll see you next time uh, when we do espresso, I guess. Oh, yeah. Because that's a whole episode in and whole, of itself. Whole other episode. Then for there's sure. the milk frothing episode, and then there's Latte uh, art. caffeine come down.